I'll start with a short scenario in 2040 when autonomous mannequins begin to replace human models vying for our attention. Moving smoothly to match the music playing in the background, each of the seven perfectly proportioned mannequins swayed to a carefully choreographed set of moves designed to draw attention to the clothes they were wearing. The eerie feeling that they were watching me as much as I was watching them was not a mistake. They were indeed looking at me. In fact, each move was being used to carefully assess my reaction on a millisecond by millisecond basis, morphing body proportions, adding and lowering height, making nipples more visible and less visible, altering the hue of eyeshadow, and transforming the smile from pouty disinterest to happy engagement with mesmerizing precision. When I caught myself drooling, I knew that they had touched a nerve. As seconds turned into minutes, I realized that each of the mannequins were competing for my attention. Being a guy who always hated being asked to go dress shopping and even offering to take a beating rather than to have to experience anything like that ever again, I was quickly changing my mind. Obviously, they knew I wasn't going to buy women's clothing, but the longer my gaze was held by theirs, I wasn't so sure. It was only around the 18-minute mark that I realized a large crowd had gathered next to me. The mannequins hadn't managed to convert me from casual observer to active buyer, so they were now working on other people in the crowd. With women, it was amazing to watch how the mannequins morphed into an almost exact replica of the person looking at them. But it was a better version of them, something they would aspire to become. Almost on cue, the mannequin would flash a knowing blink and ladies in what could best be described as a hypnotic-like trance would reach for their phone, click on the purchase button, feel absolutely nothing as they had their body scanned and leave knowing full well that a perfect fitting outfit would arrive at their home within an hour or so. No longer the passive ornaments used in today's retail stores to garner an occasional fleeting glance, these mannequins were destined to serve as standalone sales agents, never requiring a coffee break, sales commission, health insurance, or even an encouraging thank you. Welcome to the world of interactive mannequins, the life-size body models endowed with ample enough technology to make even the nerdiest of nerds stand up and pay attention. So how do today's lifeless pieces of plastic end up evolving into full animatronic fashion models that spend more time watching us than we spend watching them? Mannequins will soon become part of the tech industry, closely integrating advances in machine intelligence, stationary robotics, sensor technology, facial prosthetics, and even 3D printing for everything from teeth to nails to realistic looking skin. Most of the advancements in mannequinology will inch forward one Internet of Things device at a time. But the real magic will occur later when all the pieces are assembled and sync together into a symphony of moving, sensing, twisting, reaching pieces, all working in concert around one central objective. With inflating, deflating muscles, perfectly created broad smiles as they pierce your consciousness and morphing styles and fashions that have an amazing way of flowing perfectly with every body contour, the real trial will come when a staged test will determine whether or not these mannequins can outsell an equivalent team of live fashion models in the world's fashion centers of Paris, New York, London, Barcelona, Rome, Sydney, Antwerp, and Shanghai. Much like IBM's Watson computer pairing off against Jeopardy! champions Ken Jennings and Brad Rutter in 2011, the mannequin versus model showdown will inevitably end with machines stealing the show. Fashion models living in human bodies with human limitations will have little hope of competing with the chameleon-like color-changing, shape-shifting features of future machines with full sensory capabilities of reading somebody's emotion with 100% accuracy. At the same time, 
even though they can closely replicate human appearance, it will be a long time before they have the ability to simulate the warm and caring nature of genuine people. Many regard fashion models as the ultimate form of personal beauty. For these people, the idea of having fashion models losing in a one-on-one -on -one battle with synthetic humans is a rather depressing thought. This notion that lowly machines made of gears, motors, and switches can evolve into lifelike forms that can outflirt, outfox, and outfinesse even the best of us is both confusing, depressing, and troubling all at the same time. But before you resign yourself to this new state of depression, keep in mind that machine perfection like this will only exist if humans create it, manage it, and repair it when it breaks down. And it will always eventually break down. This evolution will also enable people to aspire to a higher calling. Rather than living the life of human works of art, this may be nature's way of pushing us for more, more wisdom, more compassion, more of what it means to be human. So will we actually have a showdown between fashion models and humanoid mannequins anytime soon? Will people still remain in control? Or will some form of machine intelligence create an entirely new set of problems for us?